There are 12 primary probiotic strains found in sauerkraut, but are they in all sauerkrauts? And what about other fermentations? Are they in there as well? I'm gonna answer all of those questions. Let's get started. The word probiotics is a broad term used when referring to bacteria and other microorganisms that are good for us, particularly our digestive systems. Lactobacillus are one of these beneficial types of bacteria that are responsible for lacto-fermentations. During the fermentation, the lactobacillus consume the natural sugars in the food and produce lactic acid as a byproduct, which is what gives lacto-fermented foods like sauerkraut that well-known sour taste. There are over 110 known species of lactobacillus, and there are also other bacteria and yeast strains that produce lactic acid and are good for us too. But lactobacillus is the largest lactic acid producing genus of the microorganisms. These good bacteria and yeasts occur naturally in soil and in the food and air. So are all 110 species in or on every vegetable? The answer is no. Each vegetable and fruit has its own unique probiotic profile, including cabbage used in sauerkraut. However, not even all sauerkrauts are gonna have the exact same probiotic profile. A research group from a Korean university acquired the same vegetable ingredients from different markets and sampled the bacterial communities within each of the foods. The research group found a variance of microorganism profiles in the same food when it was bought from different markets. Why? Because these naturally occurring bacteria are dependent on their environment. They are affected by their native origins, such as geographic region, and their immediate microenvironment of air and soil. The levels of air humidity and quality play a role as well as the moisture, minerals, and other microbes which make up the quality of the soil. All of these factors affect microorganisms. Because of this, there may be wide variations in the taste and texture of each fermentation, depending on the source of the ingredients. For example, Sally and Fred could be neighbors, yet have different microorganism profiles based on how they each amend or don't amend their garden soils. Or on a grander scale, two farms could practice the exact same farming techniques, yet one being in Thailand and the other in northern France, this will produce different micro profiles. However, this doesn't change the fact that some foods have an affinity for specific probiotic strains. It means that the numbers of each strain may vary. Here are the four prevalent strains found in most wild sauerkrauts, and I'll explain what wild fermentation is in just a moment. Now keep in mind, these are not the only strains, but the ones found with the greatest populations, and I'm not even gonna attempt to pronounce them. Here are eight more probiotic strains found in wild sauerkrauts throughout the fermentation process. And do keep in mind, this list is not exhaustive and only includes known species. There are many more species just waiting to be identified. Now a wild fermentation is one where a starter culture is not added. The fermentation is 100% dependent on the naturally occurring microorganisms present in the food. Let's return real quick to talk a little more about how certain vegetables and fruits have an affinity for certain probiotic strains. Just like with cabbage having an affinity for those probiotic strains, other foods have certain affinities as well. For example, Lactobacillus sakii. I apologize if I'm not pronouncing that correctly. It is known to only be found in garlic. One of the most popular lacto-fermentations that always contains garlic in it when following the traditional recipe is kimchi. This is why Lactobacillus sakii is typically found in most kimchis, but not sauerkrauts. Here are other examples of strains typically found in specific foods. And by the way, the L before the species name stands for the genus Lactobacillus. Again, I pre-apologize if my pronunciations are not spot on. Banana has L. buchneri CD034. Beets have L. fermentum IF03956. Radish have L. buchneri NRRL B30929. Gotta love those numbers that scientists give them. And watermelon has Wysela cybaria. P.S. 
Wysela is a genus of bacteria that are often placed under lactobacillus since they are a lactic acid producer and labeled a probiotic as well. So is there an importance to all of these different strains? Well, saying that probiotics are good for us is really oversimplifying, generalizing, and not giving credit to the highly specialized duties that each of these bacteria strains perform. Not all probiotics in the human body are isolated to the gut, nor do they do the exact same thing. For example, l in garlic is found in the healthy tissue lining of human sinuses. Persons with chronic sinus issues tend to be absent or deficient in this bacterium. Wysela cybaria, found in watermelon, shows potential for treating dermatitis and certain cancers. L. brevis, found in sauerkraut, exhibits anti-allergy properties. And really, all of this is just touching the tip of the iceberg of their health benefits. I'll leave links to those sources in the description below if you want to read further. Point being though, diversity of probiotic microorganisms is essential to total body health since the bacteria have such a broad range of health benefits in different places throughout our systems. This means eating a diverse menu of fermented foods is the best way to get the needed diversity into our bodies. Adding a variety of vegetables and fruits in the ferment recipe is also helpful. For example, a sauerkraut that also has ginger or carrots added will have a greater probiotic profile since the carrots and the ginger will introduce their own special microorganisms to the sauerkraut, kind of like in the way garlic does to kimchi. Speaking of which, I have two sauerkraut recipes. One that does include carrots and ginger that is one of my longtime standing favorites and also a new red cabbage kraut recipe that includes fresh fennel bulb, beets, and pears. Both sauerkrauts are delightful and host trillions of probiotics per tablespoon. You can get creative and combine your own added ingredients to any sauerkraut recipe. After all, garlic is not limited to only kimchi. Check out my full fermentation playlist right here. And ever wonder what the difference between pickling and fermenting is? I answer that question in this video. And here's a great video explaining five different types of fermentations. Links for all of these are in the description below. Hit that subscribe button and I will see you next time. Bye.